today's reading entitled the lord's vineyard the parable of the two sons was followed by the parable of the vineyard into one christ had set before the jewish teacher the importance of obedience in the other he pointed to the rich blessings bestowed upon israel and they showed god's claim for their obedience he set before them the glory of god's purpose which through obedience they might have fulfilled withdrawing the veil from the future he showed how the failure to fulfill his purpose the whole nation was forfeiting his blessings and bringing ruin upon themselves there was a certain householder christ said which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and dig a wine press in it and build a tower and lit it out to husbandmen and went into a far country a description of this vineyard is given by the prophet isaiah now will i sing to my will beloved a song to my beloved touching his vineyard my will beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill and he fins it and gather out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein and he looked that it should bring forth grapes the husband man chooses a piece of land from the wilderness he fences clears and tills it and plants it with choice vines expecting a rich harvest this plot of ground in its superiority to the uncultivated waste he expects to do him honor by showing the results of his care and toil in his cultivation so god had a chosen people from the world to be trained and educated by christ the prophet says the vineyard of the lord of hosts is the house of israel and the man of judah his pleasant plant upon these people god had bestowed great privileges blessings them richly from his abundant goodness he looked for them to honor him by yielding fruits they were to reveal the principle of his kingdom in the midst of a fallen wicked world they were to represent the character of god as the lord's vineyard they were to produce fruit altogether different from that on the hidden nations these idolatrous people had given themselves off toward wickedness violence and crime greed oppression and the most corrupt practices were indulged without restraint iniquity degradation and misery were the fruits of the corrupt tree in mark contrast was to be the fruit born on the vine of god's planting it was the privilege of the jewish nation to represent the character of god as it had been revealed to moses in answer to the prayer of moses show me the glory the lord promised i will make all my goodness pass before thee and the lord passed by before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin this was the truth that god desired from his people in the purity of their character in the holiness of their lives in the mercy and loving kindness and compassion they were to show that the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul 
through the Jewish nation, it was God's purpose to impart rich blessings to all people. Through Israel, the way was to be prepared for the diffusion of his light to the world. The nations of the world, through following corrupt practices, had lost the knowledge of, knowledge of God. Yet, in his mercy, God did not blast them out of existence. He purposed to give them opportunity for becoming acquainted with him through his church. He designed that the principles revealed through his people should be the means of restoring the moral image of God in man. It was for the accomplishments of this purpose that God called Abraham out from his idolatrous kindred and bade him dwell in the land of Canaan. I will make of thee a great nation, he said, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The descendants of Abraham, Jacob and his posterity, were brought down to Egypt that in the midst of that great and wicked nation they might reveal the principles of God's kingdom. The integrity of Joseph and his wonderful work in preserving the lives of those Egyptian people were a representation of the life of Christ. Moses and many others were witnesses for God. In bringing forth Israel from Egypt, the Lord then manifested His power and His mercy. His wonderful works in their deliverance from bondage and His dealings with them in their travels through the wilderness will not for their benefits alone. These were to be an object lessons to the surrounding nation. The Lord revealed Himself as a God above all human authority and greatness. The signs and wonders He wrote in behalf of His people showed His power over nature and over the greatest of those who worship nature. God went through the proud land of Egypt as He will go through the earth in the last days. With fire and tempest, earthquake and death, the great I am redeemed his people. He took them out of the land of bandage. He led them through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts. He brought them forth water out of the rock of plant and fed them with the horn of heaven. For, said Moses, the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eyes. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, breathed abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Thus he brought them into himself, that they might dwell as under the shadow of the Most High. Christ was the leader of the children of Israel in their wilderness wanderings, intruded in the pillar of clouds by day and the pillar of fire by night. He lived and guided them. He preserved them from the perils of the wilderness. He brought them into the land of promise, and in the sights of all the nations that acknowledge not God, he established Israel as his own chosen possession, the Lord's vineyard. To his people were committed the oracles of God. They were hedged about by the presence of his law, the everlasting principles of truth, justice, and purity. Obedience to this principle was to be their protection, for it would save them from destroying themselves by sinful practices. And as the tower of the vineyard, God placed in the midst of the land of his holy temple. Christ was their instructor, 
as he had been with them in the wilderness, so he was still to be their teacher and kind. In the tabernacle and the temple, his glory dwelled in the holy Shekinah above the mercy seat. In their behalf, he constantly manifests the riches of his love and patience. God desires to make of his people Israel a praise and a glory. Every spiritual advantage was given them. God withheld from them nothing favorable to the formation of the character that would make them representatives of himself. Their obedience to the law of God would make them marvels of prosperity before the nations of the world. He who could give them wisdom and skills in all cunning work would continue to be their teacher and would enable and elevate them through obedience to his law. If obedient, they would be preserved from the diseases that afflicted other nations and would be blessed with the vigor of intellect. The glory of God, His majesty and power were to be revealed in all their prosperity. They were to be a kingdom of priests and princes. God furnished them with every facilities for becoming the greatest nations on the earth. In the most definite manner, Christ through Moses had set before them God's purpose and had made plain the terms of their prosperity. Thou art an holy people, and to the Lord thy God, he said, The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to this judgment, and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep into thee the covenant and the mercy which he swears unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy line, thy corn and thy wine, and thy oil, the impress of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep in the land, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all 